hello guys and today we are uh, solving the problem or the confusion we had in our previous section where we had too many concepts everywhere so let's combine everything we had in our previous section where we made the local strategy and why do we need local or passport strategy and those kind of stuff so what we will do first we need to fix this we need to first fix this problem because as I have shown you guys that local strategy should have been a, a provider and when you see a provider usually what you would see is something called injectable provider so if you had run it so sorry for that because you may face an issue here so just try to in, use the injectable in import the injectable from the nest.js common so that would be first now second would be um, explaining a concept called guard so in order for us to use this local strategy there's something called guard and I hope that you guys saw the logging or validator so it's similar concept whereby usually again anything that happens before the request so you could do something a decorator of some sort so what we will do is this card what it will try to do in order for us to use the similar to a middleware so for us to validate or uh, add the validation strategy that we have here we will be using something again a guard so but what is it that got again we will use it the diagrams that has been shown in a, in the documentation which is really better to show or it describes better uh, compared to the diagrams i show i think um again clients again whoever is using front end uh postman or anybody so in here what god basically does is it will check or validate anything that is coming from the HTTP request and that logic is depending on you how you're guarding it so if there's some problems with the function or if there is no data in it what happens is it will mention towards the client side that it will respond towards the client side it will repel back towards the client side that you cannot continue from there so you could use guard anywhere you want from classes towards functions but in this case we will be using function especially especially for the login so you could use as well for other cases like authorization authentication a lot of things using it to repel from anything that is coming from the request of the client side so let's put it to use and let's use it for our uh, local strategy and that strategy would be the validating of email and password so what we have to do in order to use the guard we'll be going towards our controller and here similar to what we always have decorators so what we'll be using here is something called use guards and use guards is a generic term so it has it's a de generic decorator so you could say use guards but now use guards doesn't have any logic as I mentioned you could use the however you like and in our case we don't have anything so what we have to do in order for us to use guard we have to make a uh, logic for it but since we already are using something a well-known logic which will which is the local strategy we already have this logic so what we'll be using is the passport guard and that is done by fortunately by the nest.js developers so we don't have to do the logic for guarding our function and returning anything or whatever so we'll go to our controller and what we will be adding is auth guard and that is coming from passport nest.js passport so nest.js passport so there's something called auth so authentication we are using the authentication card to check whatever is happening and in authentication card there are different strategies as mentioned so we'll be using the local authentication card so now when we are mentioning as local what happens is 
again, similar to whatever we, have, whatever we have in validators or interceptors, the moment we have a request, the guard will activate a class that we have used, and that class will be called auth guard. And in the auth guard, it will check whatever we have in our project. And what we have at the moment is something called local. And what it does under the hood, it will point towards our local strategy, which we mentioned as the local strategy, and it will activate our method called validate. So that's where it comes uh, very important, right? So that's where it happens. So here it will ask for our validate user, so email and password, and it will return user otherwise if not user. So what happens if it validated and it passed through the guard? So for here, what we mentioned is we will return a user. So how do we get the user? In Millerverse, we have something called, uh, or in Express, we have requested user, if you remember. So what we'll do here is similar to that. And we will add a decorated our parameter called request. And that's where we have everything uh, coming from whatever we have done, right? Coming from the client and coming from whatever we have injected our user. So here we'll go to our login parameter. We'll use something called request. So we'll use request and open clearly and close. And then here we will use something called, okay, let's just say request. And what we will do is return the request dot user. So there should have been a type, but we don't have a type for that. So let's just do that here. So we will go, what we will do is run the project. So that will be it, nothing more, nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing more sophisticated. It's that simple. Although there were some, some configurations, we have done everything what we need to do. So hopefully, <laughs> so I hope that there's no problems with it. So we'll say npm run start, and we'll say dev. So found zero errors. Okay, nice, right, good. So now what we'll do is we'll use our postman, and in here I had the opportunity to just uh, test it out before. So we will use so um, if you whatever like whenever it generates the file whenever you use the CLI, it depends on the folder. So if the folder is called auth, it will use the endpoint called auth. And in here we have registered as login, so that's the login. Now, what we'll try to do is do something stupid first. So for example, we will um, try to use like email and this one. So this one doesn't exist in our initial array, and that array, I think we haven't seen it for a long time. So let's check it out. Let's check it out. What do you have? We have John at Gmail and Abdi at Gmail. So here we don't have it. So let's try to run it. So email and password. Let's just say that. And as you have noticed, status code 401, message unauthorized. Now let's. So we have done nothing here in our request, but it actually went to the local strategy and it said unauthorized exception so it literally used this logic so to verify or to validate that this works so let's just say here we'll go towards our validate function and we'll say console the log and in here i usually you do you shouldn't use console log so let's just say in local strategy and we receive the data which will be email and password. So password. Let's go there. Let's run in. And we have to log that. So let's run it here. And as you have noticed, it will go towards this function. And this function will have email and password logged in. But what if we changed it to something like username here? So what will happen? You, do you have you noticed that it didn't do anything so let's just run it again right let's run it set do you notice that it didn't do anything so when we said username and password it didn't do anything there's it didn't even go through it and that's where we have done 
in our super and that super we have changed it to the email so what happened is the username or anything that we have whatever we put in in our body if it's not similar to what we have asked which was the username field which would be email or the password then it will say like unauthorized for example but for example let's just do that like a normal way right so now we will do that username and password and what happens is in local strategy it allowed, allowed us because as a default it will use the username that's why we overrode the username field so that's the password that's what what is happening under the hood so we're, what we understand here now at the moment is we use the uh, use guard and use guard is using a logic that validates whether you could use the login function or any other functionality so for this case we'll be, we use the auth guard and that auth guard allows us to use different strategy for this case for this instance we'll be using something called local and then under the hood in the passport it will use the local strategy that we have in our project which means the local strategy of this one right so now in the validate function if the attributes are correct it will continue through the validate otherwise it will throw an exception instantaneously I will mention unauthorized instantly if you don't have the data at all so now we have to again let's just write it again so we'll use username field and we will use an email so let's use an email here and the password itself and let's try sending it again and yeah it, it's using at the moment the email so if you try to use something else you could use phone number or anything whatever you want so but our case it will be email here because we don't have any other data right so email password now let's try it out what happens when you have a proper login so let's try to create similar email and password we'll use this post it will go to this endpoint it will create this user email and password we will send that now and we have created our user so now we will go towards our login here and let's say send and it returns us is approved email and password so now how did we get that so again we will go towards our auth controller in here we have mentioned that we will be using request and in the local strategy we mentioned that okay i mentioned that but the moment we mentioned as return under the hood passport will inject in the request an object called user and that user can be used like requested user so if we change something else it will change accordingly i think possibly okay so requested user i haven't tried that so you could try it out so requested user will be injected and we will return that requested user and we have received it so basically we are receiving our results from logging in and if we make a wrong password it will say unauthorized as well so that will be it and in the next video what we want to do it doesn't make sense to return just the user but what we want to do is return a JWT token that mentions that we have logged in and we are able to use or access the other functions through the system without any problems so what we have to do is use this JWT strategy and JWT module so but that will be in the next video so i guess that will be it thank you very much and i hope everything makes sense now yeah bye